Okay, here we go. So look, I went to the movies yesterday. Well, let me explain. Look, we don't have any movies. I live in a place called Alice in the Eastern Cape. And it's like, let's call it rural, but it's like, it's rural. Anyway, so it's like two hours to get to a local movie theater. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you know, it's two hours to get there. I had to go there anyway, because not to the movie theater, but I had to go to that mall that this, that this, it's this, well, direct TV, direct whatever you call that, um, um, telecom direct, the telephone people. Anyway, I have a long standing problem with them, like a lot of institutions that have in South Africa. But the problem, but the thing is, I went there. So since I was there, gosh, and I gotta hitch a ride down, I don't, I don't get into the whole thing. So I go, oh, let me go to see them, let's go to the movies. I got this thing done, so let me go, hey, I got some time before I, before I go back. It's two hours, right? Um, two hours to uh, get back. So, let me go to movies. So I went to see John Wick 3, Parabellum. <laughs> anyway, um, now this is interesting. What's really interesting about John Wick, I know they call it, what is it, Gung Fu, whatever have it. Um, I know everybody's got to do a lot of stunts and you know, messing with guns and blah, blah, blah. blah. Entertaining movie. I like it. It's my kind of movie because basically I like revenge things and I like, you know, getting even things, you know. I like uh, 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 those kind of things, you know, not necessarily crime, but you know, I like guy things, you know, guns, you know, kung fu, throwing people around, da 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 da, you know, but I don't look at it like that. I look at it differently. I look at it like black like ballet. Like when I first saw Clockwork Orange, you know, that famous scene with him in the thing with the other gangs, like that, it's a ballet. You look at it, it's a ballet. But I digress. The reason why I'm bringing all this stuff up because John Wick, the world of John Wick, let's put it that way, they have a code. Now, you outside it, you don't necessarily have to deal with the code. The inside is they have to work by that code. Now, ADOS is in a country that has several codes, but the code that's the overriding code is that, well, it's a country of deceits and lies. <laughs> it's a country of, you know, if we're going to make a law, we, we show the public going to make this law, then the lawyers, well, most of the Congress has been through some kind of law thing where they have staff their staff is a bunch of lawyers, so the country is run by lawyers, basically. And so we're all law, you know, it's a game for them. You know, you you, you, you play, you know what I mean? There's certain things, there's codes, you know? John Wick World has a code, you know? We should have codes or a code. We have several different codes, but you still have to go by a code. That's the point. The outside world doesn't have to know about your code, but you should know about your code, and you should abide by your code. That's why I follow, what? That's why I'm, look, Mentally, I'm ADOS. You know, the rest of my body is a bunch of things. You know, I got a little bit of, uh, you know, black nationalism in there, and I got some pan-Africanism in there, and I got some this kind of struggle, and I got some artistic things happening. But my head, the way I think, is ADOS. But but guiding that thinking, right, is a code. Now, my particular code, individual code, personal code, comes from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. and his book. His United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, his book, it's a book, it's a textbook as a matter of fact, see, a textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy, that's what racism is in this country, is white supremacy. By Mr. Lee Fuller Jr. Now, by this code, you know what I mean? By individual code, there's things like, for instance, uh, there's a thing. Uh, no, no, don't fuss, don't flee, don't fight. You know, and they're talking dealing with the with the police, which is basically all your all your wardens, you know, your your jail keepers or whatever have you. And so, if you think of yourself, Lee Fuller says, think of yourself as a prisoner of war. How would you act? What would you do? Da da da. So if you prisoner of war, you don't argue with the guards because the guards got other guards. And they got and they got the the police. And they got the state. A state militia or whatever, the, what, what they call them, National Guard, they got a bunch of things behind them, right? So, you can't really mess with them too much. Talking about police. So, for instance, let me give you a perspective, see what I mean? Now, a lot of people are going to think I'm wrong when I say this. But I saw that Sandra Bland thing where, uh, from her cell phone camera, and what was said. The thing is, look, forget who's right or wrong. He was doing what he's doing. Of course, he's hopped up or whatever have you. She's, and she's reacting to a hopped up person. 
let me give you give two examples of what I'm talking about. When I was in Cape Town, was, uh, when I was in Cape, Cape Town a long time, you know, we, sometimes we go to these clubs on, on Long Street, whatever have you. And then, you know, uh, my uh, person I was hanging out the town, well, anyway, our, our little crew, it was only two or three people. Now, you know, we had, we got it, we had a car, you know, somebody's car, you know, and so it parks on, it's like, so, so you have a thing called uh, Long Street, and up above you have another street, whatever street that is, I forgot what the thing is. Uh, Anyway, so he parked the car up there. So now this is this is like now it's like two o'clock in the morning. We're going home. So we now these are this is two o'clock in the morning. It's an empty street. It's, it's a big long street. It's an em empty street. You know, it's very wide. You know, so so when we're walking across the street, say the block for the club, it's the next block down, whatever have you, we come to this block, and then the car is over here. So we we diagonally walk across this empty street, right? Three or four of us walking across the street. As we're getting close to the car, this cop car pulls up. And uh, the the guy he can see is on the passengers are he goes he starts to say something and you can see his he's sweat he's like like this is two or two two thirty in the morning it's not this may have been the summer wasn't hot you know what I mean and so he's sweating and everything like that. and then he starts b belligerently starting addressing us and people were saying so I said everybody quiet quiet because this guy was definitely hopped up on something and I said I just said, look let me this one person one person and I said calm everybody down and I talked to him and I said sir blah blah and I talked to him talked directly with me directly not looking at anybody else so everybody just keep quiet so after a while he said something that I, I guess his ego, his ego got satisfied with whatever so so he left so, so now you know now what I'm saying you have a cop that is on duty with his partner his partner's not ratting him out but he's obviously on drugs and obviously at 2 o'clock in the morning he's got to harass somebody for something I don't know what it is so I don't have to deal with that. What I have to deal with is calming him down, calming my crew down, and making this person focus because he's out of focus. He's, da -da 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 he's wired up. That was accomplished. Let me give you another one. This is more, this is more personal. It's kind of interesting. Okay, as you may be, I grew up in I grew up in the Mount the, uh, the Mount Haven section of the South Bronx, so basically the Patterson Project. Well, I grew up in the Patterson Project. Okay. Now this was a different era, you know. This is like late fifties, early sixties when I grew up. And we have we have codes. Now every ghetto, every place has the same code, right? You don't rat you don't rat anybody out. Just don't rat them out. You don't go to the police for anything, okay? I won't give you my history of the police right now, but I'll just some other time. So in my brain, you know what I mean? You never go to police for anything. You don't rat people out, whatever it is. Okay, so here I am traveling. I end up not end up, I'm traveling. And I'm in Delray Beach, Florida, which is uh well, I'm in Delray Beach, Florida. <sighs> Florida. Anyway. So I realized something to the point. I got a place, you know what I mean? I was in this little room, these old, well, these two older women, uh, Miss Essie and Miss Bessie, great time. I'll, sometime I'll tell you all about them. It's great. Anyway, um, and so, uh, so I had been there for a while, whatever, but I started to think. I said, wait a second. I had been traveling. I went to Florida. Anyway, I'm traveling, I'm traveling, but I realized I have no backup. I'm traveling on my, here I am in a new place. Delray, never been to Delray Beach, Florida, and with some people, but... And I developed, excuse me, and I developed this thing in the morning. Uh, every morning I would wake up at 4, 3, 4 30 in the morning, right? I'd wake up and I would walk to the beach. It's Delray Beach, right? Now, the place I was at by this, the famous tennis club, is by that with uh, Chrissy Everett, whatever those, those famous tennis club. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so I lived basically, let's say for instance, this is the tennis court, right? I lived, and there's a railroad, no. Where's the railroad tracks? Uh, yeah, railroad tracks right there, right? And so I lived on the other side of the track. So I lived in this place here. There's an interesting church right there, a little church, but um, doesn't matter. So, so, so you had the court there, and then you, and then you have the, um, uh, and I said like the train station. Then you have basically to say downtown, right? Then you had a, like a canal, right? Then you had the beach with all, you know property on the beach so you have these realities so for me to go in the morning to go to the beach to do my, what I was doing which is my prayer and meditation a little exercise I had to walk you know through downtown da, 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 da. and I realized I'm walking at 4 30 in the morning and there's nobody out there but me and so for some reason I don't know I mean I'm guided by the spirit you know the great spirit guides me all the time so what I do uncharacteristically I go to the police station and I said, I want to speak to somebody. So the guy on duty, this lieutenant that was on duty, he says, he comes very tentative, comes to me and says, well, what, well, how can I help you, blah, blah, blah. And so I explained to him that every morning I have this ritual where I'm, you know, I'm living there, then I go to the, I have my ID out. I go to the beach, I do my prayer and meditation, you know, then I walk back and, you know, and I start my day. I explain that to him. 
So first of all, he asked me this question because at the same time, there was a guy, there was a brother in California. He had locks or whatever. Oh, I forgot to tell you, when I was traveling, I had very long locks. I had locks. Long locks. Well, that, that, yeah, that's, yeah, it was pretty long lock, locks. Now, we're talking about, when was this? This is like the, uh, hmm. I did have long locks. This was like the, the I had left my job. So this is like the late, uh, the late 90s. Anyway, so I had long locks. So this guy in California, his brother, was walking. Just, he just walked to California. I guess you all don't walk. Uh, I'm from New York, so I'm used to walking. And so uh, he would get harassed all the time, and the police would harass him. And so eventually he put up a, a, a suit against the state of California, and he won. So this guy, I guess all the police, I guess they get all... Anyway, so he was concerned that I was basically... Someone is going to set them up or whatever the deal is. You see? Now... Let me tell you another reason why I'm not going to, well, let me not tell you that. Not, let me finish this story here. So, uh, so I'm going like, oh man. So I go and ask, I tell the guy, and then I explain to him my ritual, and, da, 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 and he says, okay, I'll tell you what. So he takes out his card, you know, his business, whatever, lieutenant, whoever. And he writes on the back, please afford Mrs. Sloan, and he da 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 and then he gives it to me. And I had this little Foley wallet where I basically had my driver's license in one side and then I had his card on the other side. Okay? So here we go. So, sure enough, I got the card. I get start my morning ritual. The first day, nothing. The second day, the exact second time, second day, uh, I kid you not, I'm walking. To, I'm walking, start my ritual. I'm walking, and I'm on the main thing right now. I just crossed. I just crossed the. Yes, I just crossed the train. I just crossed the train tracks. No, walking. Cop call comes. It is cuts me off. Right, he cuts me off. Right, and and and, and well, as he cuts me off, I'm going whoa, you know. And this mm -hmm. woman jumps out. She's not in the driver. So she's not the driver. She, a, a female uh, a cop jumps out. You know. And as she's jumping out, before she even, whatever, and I'm, just, I'm they block me, right? And she says, Would, without any preambles, everything, she said, have I dated you? And immediately my memory clicked. I just knew what was going on. Set up. Here's what they do. They want to get you talking. If they, if they, if they spur you on by a provocative thing and you react to that provocative thing and they got you talking, then what happens, first of all, they have to assess because of your articulation. Right now I'm articulating very good, which I, I don't know. If you can articulate and speak, the, um, speak English language very enunciate and very clearly like I'm doing right now, then they have to think of you differently. Then if you were dressed as whatever locks or whatever happened, and you and you're going like, oh, I ain't never dated no white girl in my life. What are you talking about, girl? If I come out like that, then they have they have this. She has this image, and then they can go from there. They've provoked me. They put me into a, a, a an arena that they control. I'm now fighting in their arena, unaware of what's what the heck's going on. Who's who, who's the whatever it is, right? See, so so it's a setup. So she went through all this. Let me see some ID. You know what I mean? I don't even think she was this. Yeah, she was a little belligerent. Anyway, so I just calmly caught that little bofo and I, I, I gave her. She says, "Let me." Then she saw my my ID, but she saw the police, um, you know, his his car. He said, "What's that? Do you know someone? To, who's that? What's that? What are you?" And I gave it to her, and she looked at it. She read it, and she said, um, "Excuse us, Miss, Miss, you have to understand." Blah 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 blah. They, they tell me this whole thing. Then they let me go. And for the rest of the time I was in Delray Beach, which is a very long time, I never got stopped. Ever, ever, ever. I never got any problem. Then guess I know that the whole Delray, whatever, police department knew who I was because I had to spread it around. This guy, leave this guy alone. You know, that other way, da, 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 da. Boom. Now, so what did I, what happened? I did something uncharacteristic. Now, I didn't grow up like that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm traveling by myself with no backup, no money, no whatever it is. And... Uh, and I'm stopped by the police. Anything could happen, right? But because I did what I did, it changed the dynamic. I, I, I was, they're used to a certain thing. I disrupted their thing on a bunch of levels. And now they had to forget, they had to show me some kind of respect. Because the, here's what it is. The card that was written to me, the lieutenant who wrote the card, right? He showed me respect. Let's start all over. I showed respect by going to the police station. When I went to the police station, 
like any black person, they wasn't they were leery set up, right? But then they showed me respect by giving me by he giving me this little card with his name on it. Then when I was stopped, disrespect, right? But the but the um, woman, the police under the well, police guy, police woman, she looked at she had to show me respect because she had to respect <laughs> that signature. And, and that signature was given to me. Now I'm the bearer of that signature, and that da 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 da. You know what it's like? It's like this is the, there's a um, okay. This is just a made up well, dog tags. Don't really like. When I get back, say I'm really make it. See, I have this dog tag that I made because it's called uh, oh audio drama just on one side. I put that uh, and I put uh, my website, my press website on the side. But this is a dog tag. You know how dog, that's a military term, but you know how dog tag started? With slavery. You've seen those pictures where they had the little the, the board around the slaves, the slaves going on an errand. It's got a little thing, it's got a little board with his name, it was his master, whatever have you. They, they may, you may have hated slaves, whatever have you, but the master's thing is on there. The master has thing there. Um, you could do nothing against that because the master, the dog tag, the dog tag, the master's thing, you know, was around. You see what I'm saying? That's what we call respect. Okay, so, so now the system has respect. So, okay, that's what happened. So I never was bothered. So what am I saying? I'm not giving anybody else any, I can't, because I go by Neely, Mr. Neely Fuller's thing, which is basically, this is, it, it's a personal thing. I can't tell you, I, uh, what do you call it, VGQ? I have my own point of view. I have what I've been through and how I relate to whatever, 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 and how I deal with stuff. I've learned that, uh, in trans, I've learned that just by growing up and da 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 da, da and traveling on my own. Right? Most people don't travel on their own, so you don't know how to act. You know, it doesn't matter. So what I'm what I'm trying to say is, of course, but be they right or wrong, she was wrong for jumping out saying I, I dated her. What, what, what's that about? You know. So you know when certain stuff happens, you have to read this. You have to read the situation and act accordingly. You just go to come there and look. In your in your neighborhood, you're used to smacking every. You're used to smacking people all the time. Blah blah blah. You go to another neighborhood, you can't go around smacking people. That's, that's what you do in your neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? I'm messing this all up. All I'm saying is this. You got to have a code. You know, Bunk says you got to have a code. Okay. So that's it. For me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the change to bed. Letting you know what I only suspect from a desk that would this situation of the A D O S, the North American descendants of chattel slavery.